introduce to you our speaker, Suzanne Bosham, who is going to talk to us about all things Clearwater Beach and how it got to be what it is today. So please welcome Suzanne. Turning out this great turnout. I hope you'll enjoy the presentation. This is a picture of Florida Beach in 1920. Florida Beach is nothing more than a sandbar built out across the uh, mainland, about what? Two miles from the mainland. But things change over time. Now, when I went to school, I went to college in Richmond, Virginia in the late 60s, and I told them, they said, Where are you from? Florida Beach, Florida. I was sitting here crickets in the valley of miles there. They had no idea where to put a walk. I said, Well, you heard of Tampa? Oh, yeah, I have a Tampa cigar. I've heard of Tampa. I said, When you go to Tampa, you point your car due west, go about 20 miles, and when your front tires slow, you go on. You go on the beach. But now, today, I don't think there's any corner of the globe you can go to if people don't know where to go to beach is. I've had a million theories of why that is. That's developed over time. But originally, of course, there were no interstates, so how did people get to Florida? They came down A1A. That was all the what's the, the East Coast of Florida, the Lauderdale, Daytona Beach, all the way to Miami. Nobody really knew much about the West Coast of Florida. You had to come down in 301, and nobody in the world in the right mind would want to do that voluntarily. <laughs> So over the years, people decided they were on the east coast of Florida, and they said, wait a minute, rocky, gray beaches, cold Atlantic water. Over there, it's really nice white sand and warm water. <laughs> so we started to grow. Okay, well, I'm going to go through and try to explain to you the growth of Florida beach without showing you pictures. It would be like trying to describe to you what growth is based like. That you've never tasted one. So we're going to go through on pictures. Now, I've tried to do them chronologically, and I didn't like that. I tried to do them by areas and like that. So we're going to wing it. It's all over the place. If anybody is lost or they can't keep up or they have a question or anything, you can interrupt me anytime. I love to talk about it. So we're going to start now. Again, here we are. So, yeah. Um, we're not serving cabbage. Okay, this would be the causeway. This is the south end of the island. I know some people here from Florida Point. This is what you looked like before. And there was a drawbridge going over to San Antonio. You see all of this? We could have bought all of that. At one time, the city of Florida bought all that for a million dollars. What happened? U.S. Steel came in and bought it, and they sold us this back for a million dollars, and they developed all of that. Here's another view. Now, you've got a little bit more development here, but again, sand key is, is pretty tiny, nothing here. This is going to be important. I'm going to explain that this is a spoil or a jet. This is later on, we're going to talk more about that. Here again is some more pictures. This again is sand key. This area here was part of the Bellevue Biltmore. The Bellevue Biltmore used to own that land. And people would come over there by boat or however they would get there. And they had little cabanas. It was part of your experience in the Bellevue Billboard. Over here is Clearwater Beach. And down further is Calhoun. There are a lot of people. Here is the, okay, here is the key. The, uh, this part would be early island states. Now it's not finished. If you live on that one, you're going to say, well, where's my place? Your place is down here. It's not there yet. <laughs> this happened. This happened in the early 60s. People were dredging it out of the Gulf of and everybody got out of the bay and everybody said, oh, the world's going to be there. They're going to drown. These people are going to flood. Lots there started $5,000. The last lot that sold there, the empty lot, was $365,000. So that would have been a really good thing. Okay, anybody know where this is? This is Gulf Boulevard. There's nothing there. This is the causeway. There's your Pier 60, early Pier, and nothing there. Okay. Yeah. If I'm going too fast, I want to get all this in. Here is South Beach. There's a finger missing, I believe. It's supposed to be what? Devon, Brightwater, and then the point. 
Somehow I, I think it's a thing, but again, look, nothing in it. And what I want to point out is how close the water is to the road. We don't realize how much our beach, in fact, a friend that I went to high school with hadn't seen the beach in all these years. I don't think it can be anymore. And I said, I know, we have, and there's a reason for it. We'll look at that later. Here again is the causeway. This, this area here, this is an interesting place. Originally, in the 20s and 30s, it was a place called Joyland, and it had, believe it or not, slides on the roof that you could slide down into the pool. It was actually a this Florida contest put on in there. Here's Pier 60. But look, there's nothing. There's nothing there. This, this is your shopping. This is uh, from uh, Papaya all the way up to the roundabout. Uh, and and the slow back. Here's Iowa State, what Iowa State was originally. My girlfriend and I was three of our neighbors at Airlock Canoe and we're all over there in his t shells. Here, here again is this place. This eventually became the Seashell Hotel. Believe it or not, this was all a trailer park. People would hook up their, you remember, hook up their aluminum airstream trailers and come down for the winter. And it was full of the trailer park, and most of the island at the time was full of these Australian mines. Huge mines. They're illegal now because the food is in the sewer system. But it was really nice because we didn't have air conditioning and it made everything nice and cool. And it made a horrible noise during the storms, the wind through those things. And chills down the But anyway, this this was the main building of the hotel. You had little cabins, and then the rest of it was just these beautiful pine trees and these airstreams. Here's a view of the causeway coming over. This was this is the first of the bridge. It was a drawbridge, and there were two drawbridges prior to the bridge downtown, and they were all getting stuck. And this, of course, is prior to the bridge in Keystone. Bridge went up, you were stuck unless you had a boat. And my dad used to say, if you want to trap three quarters of the world's nuts, all you have to do is raise up your <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Here, here's what I was saying about the beach. Okay, this is probably, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, somewhere on North Beach, but this is a seawall. And you'll notice that the water comes up from the seawall. And originally, from, if anybody knows where Somerset Street is down here, from Somerset North, you could walk maybe two blocks before water hit the seawall. You couldn't walk all the way down. You certainly couldn't walk to Caledonia because there was a pass there. Well, after the pass, after the hurricane and the pass closed down, and Phil was standing where you could walk to Caledonia, all of a sudden, the sand was starting to build up. Well, it started building up and building up. Now, all of a sudden, before you know it, the seawall was covered. All the steps leading down, like there's steps there leading down, they're all covered, everything's covered. The jetties, that thing that I pointed to, we call it jetty on the sand peak, that was, we had groins out there to hold the sand in because it was being swept north into the path. So the pants were left, boom, all of a sudden we got beach. So what did the city do? The city said, well, hey, if you own the waterfront property, we're going to allow you to build over the seawall because the seawall is there anymore. Well, that's wonderful. But that pants that rose up again in the storm, we're going to be having a bon voyage party for the people that live there because they built over it. The sand is going to go anyway. Okay, here again, these are the Australian pines I was talking about. And this, I believe, is in front of that uh, trailer park. You'll notice uh, probably a trailer there. And, and the beach just wound around. It was beautiful, very natural, very natural. Uh, okay. All right. I don't know how many people were going to remember the original Clearwater Beach Hotel. Clearwater, this was the very original one. This was a tourist hotel. And for some reason, I don't know why, Anne might be able to tell me why, it turned into a women's Christian college for a while until the hurricane took it down. And I believe the top of that wound up being a yacht club from the Thank you for that. This house here, there's been much discussion on this house on the website that I'm on, the Facebook page. I, somebody I think identified who lived there, but that's long since gone, and this right here would be where the problem is going. I need to give credit real quick. These photos, a lot of these photos I pirated off of uh, postcard website, cardcap.com. The 
but the rest have come from this wonderful Facebook group called You Know, You Grew Up at Home when you were born. Everybody, I, I met people that I went to nursery school at that time, but they post and they all share these wonderful photos. It's such a treasure. I'm sure whatever hometown you're in, there will be a Facebook page that will do something great. Okay, let's see where we are now. All right, I have trouble with this one. This is definitely the marina, and this is the Everingham Pavilion. This is again the, the trees in the trailer park. Now these, this is why I the picture. These are growing. They're still there. They're still there. They were wooden and concrete jetties that went out into the water. Of sand, but they also come with farmland. I don't think the child on this grew up on this beach. Like, it doesn't bear the scar down for a chaos of running into those barnacles. <laughs> okay, here is the marina, 1950. Look, it's half of the size of this, but here again is the park with the trees. There's nothing here. Originally, when we came to Florida Beach, you came across here, you went west on this road, you came around and you went east back here, a roundabout, just a key intersection. It's a big piece of land in the middle that we're going to address in a minute. Okay. okay, again, this is Santee, and I think it said 1960s on Santee. I didn't know the code to get this, but we had an opportunity to survive. Okay, here's the marina again. Look. No, no, I don't know if it was a tea streamer, no, no, that. And here we still, okay, this, believe it or not, was a Howard Johnson. The first thing you saw as you came over the bridge was Howard Johnson. <laughs> and my daddy took me fishing right here at the Barefoot Bay now, and he came well here with was at the time, in public there, so we would go, he would snag a moment, and I didn't hear, I was just going to wait until I got my bike. <laughs> Here was the um, park in. It was a restaurant, package house, the bar. There were a few restaurants other than the Island of the Beach and the Pelican Club. Guess what this is in here? That's a pool. That was an Olympic sized pool. This is when we were in high school. We had a pool then. Their swim club went on. But, you know, and here's the Pier 60 parking lot on sand. Which reminds me, when I grew up, there was only one day road on the beach that was at play. And here's the yeah, here's the whole bar, nothing here, 440, 450 people. They're not there yet. And but this is this is the lagoon, we're gonna talk about that. This is where this is where Shepherds is today, but this is the lagoon resort. And here are the fingers starting to fill in with homes. Okay, 1930s beach traffic. Going to the beach. This is the mainland, you're heading over to the beach. They were always coming to beach. People always coming to beach. Okay, all right. Now here's here's the trailer park, here's the marina, and Howard Johnson. And now we have the Memorial Beach Civic Center. We're gonna have better pictures of that later. Then. I'll go. Uh, we have a community. We have a community. I look around at you guys like your community. And I love everybody. I love this place because it is. We had a community civic center where we had the Jolly Trolley was born there, the library was there, the police department was there, and we had a big auditorium where we could hold all kinds of events. We had bingo, the bingo, Friday night bingo at Stanford. That was what you want to talk about two or three hundred people. Okay, anybody know where this is? That's Gulf Boulevard. And those were homes, that's all they were up there were homes, private homes, but all the way down to the whole bar. I remember we came driving by the other day, and some woman in one of her private homes had opened up a gift shop on the, front, on the porch. Oh, I told her, get my business gift shop. And I thought my mother was commercial. It's all commercial. And I looked at her, and I thought, oh, boy, she's here today. <laughs> Again, the old boulevard, and you can see how close the water is. And yet, right about here would be local sand, but it wasn't going to be here. Again, I got fascinated with this. And again, I don't know, 440, 450. All right, here's Island State. There would be public. This is 
Michael and you've done this. So this is the Fieldwork Tower. It's the first one. Yeah. And anybody who lives in Horizon House, this is the first one. You know, we we didn't know what the word condominium was. We had to learn how to spell it. No, we don't. It would have gone. Because you either owned a home or you rented an apartment. You didn't have condominium. What in the world was it? What did they do with a condominium? And it just had a few houses. My very best friend lived in that house there. And all the time we went. And uh, this was the high and dry rain. You can see down the coast there now. They're all on the Green Science Center would be about here. Okay, going to CNP, there was a drawbridge. This is going in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here was originally the built. Then it became a holiday camp. It's now an empty lot where that people are going to build JC building on the park cases. Here was Love Ross. I think there's still a Love Ross restaurant in St. Louis. It's wonderful. Next week. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad Okay. This one you have to play. This, of course, is A. And you wonder how in the world, you know, the big building like that is. Permitted on the North Beach, what happened? How did that happen? Well, the way that happened was originally before World War II, there was going to be a big luxury hotel there. The plans were to, and, and in front of it, this road here is called um, Bank. Just have it through. <coughs> Kipling Plaza is the two way esplanade. Originally, now remember, Island States wasn't there. They would come from the mainland. It was going to be a causeway that came from the mainland to all the way down to the pond. It was a wonderful view for them. A war came, and there was nothing for it. I mean, the half the wall was up, and it just became a ruin, which we were told not to go play there in the first place we went. But uh, later on, it, it became developed into a park. Oh my God, all these years that I've known this institution, never done of what if it had been, or what if it had been a hotel? And the possibly there, well, what happens when there's no the the restaurants? There are shops, there are hairdressers, there are large shops. Now, how close the North Beach came to being the commercial end of the island? It never even dawned on me, oh my God, that would have happened. Now everybody that lives on North Beach wish that causeway was there so they could get home. <laughs> but anyway, so that's how 880 is there in a single family area. Okay, here we are again at the uh, the marina. A little bit more uh, going on there, but not much. Oh, oh here I have shuffleboard of course. <clears throat> this would be the pool down here where you can't do these are the shuffleboard courses. Uh, later on, it became uh, miniature golf course. We had miniature golf course. And there was by the pool, which I, I, I have pictures, but the pool would be here. Over here was a pool house where you change the little basket that you would keep your clothes in. And also, because we didn't have a Catholic church at the time, St. Uh, Brendan's was built later on, we had mass there. All right, here now we got a little bit more island space. We sold all this, so now we need to dredge up more. So that's what we have here. This would be, I'm guessing here, uh, early 60s, about 1960s. Okay, where are we? Okay, that's another. Here is island space prior to it. Not right there, but the mangrove. Squirrel beds, which pretty much go all the way down to. Right. And you'll notice here, here, down here, this is uh, one part of the new bridge comes here, and of course, in this island where uh, here's the hundred is. Oh, yes, that's fine. This is the one bridge. Okay. okay. They didn't make the bridge because of the problem, and the uh, crossway wasn't built yet. The crossway was built like so right here we have the rickety bridge, the old wooden bridge, and the old wooden bridge came in right over there. And of course, again, the Iowa State's not being there. It came from Seminole Docks all the way to this bridge. And it had a turntable, a concrete turntable, a low tide after the bridge was gone. At low tide, you can see that concrete turntable out there. Well, somebody told me recently that 
postcard has like little bits of photographs. That's what it looks like during the. You can see the bridge of the eye. Yes. There it is. How would you like to get halfway across the bay and even have a flat tire or a wooden plank break? I mean, I wouldn't go on there unless I was a really good swimmer. That's a 1917 rickety bridge with the steps from a place that's 19 on the off, 1928 on the off. Okay, here we are again on, let's see, there's Pier 60 and the parking lot. And this road that turns around, that turns into the Gulf of War. Okay, see how close the, the water is? The, to me, the real telltale is the size of the pier, the fishing pier, the original pier. I think it's coming up soon. Okay. No. <laughs> That's the beginning of the dredging of Iowa's disease. You can imagine what we thought when we saw that, oh my god, you know, look at the drown. <laughs> and, and the causeway again. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, here is the Florida Beach Hotel, the back side of it, the original one. Looking down at the right here would be the Palm Pavilion. And again, don't be. Okay. Joyland, remember I told you that round building had a slide? There it is. And this, I believe, is 1930s Florida Beach. If you think people didn't come to the beach, they came to the beach, even in the 1930s. I've seen some pictures way back where I thought there's more people there then than there are at spring break now. I don't know how they got there or why they came, but, but I guess probably like everybody else to stand in the sea. But there, there's this original seashell motel with the slide going down. And there, there she is. There's a seashell in her day. We can see that I think those are 70 cars, the station wagon. Yeah, there's some slides. This would, I think this looks like the Florida Beach Hotel. That's 1922. And the seashell. Seashell, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is, uh, of course, everybody I think would recognize the Palm Pavilion. That's the way it was when I that, yeah, when, when, when we were young. This is how it looked. And uh, this says what the 1960s are now. Okay. And this is taken from, this is in that area, but this would be 1926. Okay. I love the suits, the babies, the onesies for the guys. And here's the 60s beauty contest. I love beauty contest. And Palm Pavilion once more. And then here was the next incarnation of the Palm Pavilion. Instead of, uh, there was a dress shop there. Now they have a miniature doll. We seem to be obsessed with the miniature Oh, and, and what you didn't know, look up here. That pier was there for many years until the hurricane took it down to about there and they left it up for people at the lookout and a place to gather the world and watch it like that and then they eventually went all the way. Okay, and the view from inside the palm building now. Some of these postcards, they take a lot of poetic places, especially with coloring. Again, the palm building. I'm waiting for the good. That's the one. Well, this is the Palm Pavilion after the storm, and uh, they rebuilt the Hamiltons, of course. <laughs> yeah. The Hamiltons, of course, have owned that since time immemorial, but they rebuilt the Palm Pavilion. And again, you know, the water is closer now at that point than it is now. It would take a lot before you could get this done today. I'm sorry? I have no idea what the so can you go back one and see it might have a date. It doesn't have a date on this particular It could have been any story. This would have to have been way, way back. Because that the palm really has to look like that since I was 12 years old. And that's that was a long time ago. <laughs> Here again, here's Palm Billion now. It's got the goodbye um miniature golf and you've got both. Okay. Uh, all right. This was just north of the Palm um, Pavilion, the Ocean Club. I had actually forgotten because there were so many posted pictures online. And I even remember, I was about 16 and I went in there. I went the bar and they had to pull I just wandered in on the beach. And this three guys were there. And I'm going, like, wow, look at all the guys. And I'm going, like, wow, none of the guys are looking at me. <laughs> 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 I was stoned. Florida Beach, best kept secret. 
They had wood slats and all these things. Oh, and again, and here's the, yeah, here's the coloration of the postcard. We different never get mentioned. And here's uh, 1930s, 1920s, the word beach. It looks back to me. That are another rendition of Pier 60 that after they took off all the seating up here, they had a uh, clothing store here. And this was Alexander's. Now that that's coming into play, the pool again. Next. Okay, I just noticed it. This is the this is the motel next to me. This nobody realizes the, it's a hotel cabana now. They freaked out and put a lot on. But the original Coco Cabana was one story, and it was Coco Cabana because the dark brown and white on the edge is like wedding cake. And uh, years later, uh, uh, next one's going to be oh, this one. This is the back of that. Those are the front of those. This is the back. Now look, look. I love this. Two cent postcard. Mr. and Mrs. Ray Baxter, Cheney, Kansas. Now, what are the odds that it's going to get everybody in Cheney in the Baxter's? They would never get there today. I loved it when I saw that. So, here's the Coca Cabana later on. They banned the second story, painted it pink, and they have the coffee shop. Anybody on the beach for a long time ate at that coffee shop. If you did best food in the world, breakfast. That, oh, breakfast and lunch is all they serve. Waiting line to get what three booths and a couple of stools and be waiting forever. Okay, and here it is again. Okay, so I, I saw this one first. Bondo, Bondo. I know the Bondo. Where in the world is the Bondo? John told me that the people in the book van bought the Bondo because it's right next door. And they put the coffee shop right there. <laughs> I kept it because I went to school with a boy that lived right there. And I was like, I know the bottle. It's now part of the incorporated part of the bottle. Okay. And there now is 19, what, 50, no, 1960, so we've got to have a street address. <laughs> and there's a couple of them. I just threw it in because I love that format. I want that format. <laughs> Now this is my place in 1940, and if you notice, nothing, nothing. And the street, this is Somerset, and it is sand, and there's sand going back to Somerset there. That's what we will find. This is an Australian pine. It's long gone, but there's another one there that's probably a fortune tree in that And this was the Somerset side of my property, where we drove the cars in. There, I was not at that point, I don't think, born yet, but my dad, when I did, and needed more room, my dad built this in, and built this in, and so we had more room to live. And there's my mom and her friend, and look, so we didn't have air conditioning, there's no air conditioning, right? So, well, we had steam heat, and my God, that was a big selling point. Steam heat. <laughs> and I, I'm just trying to give you an idea of what in motels, people's wife that time. This is still in existence. This is a jewel of this, but it's on the east end of Somerset on the bay. It's still around today. And that's what it looks like when somebody's put a second floor on it now. Okay, anybody can tell me where the White House cottages were? Anybody? Yes. No? Okay. And everybody rides that puts on everybody rides by. It's on, was on East Shore. It's now that big parcel of vacant land that the Marriott's uh, built on baby. Anyway, that was the light up thing, the old wooden cottages. That was, see, you either had a house or you had cottages or something. Again, condominiums look back. Okay, again, I, I was obsessed with building the boulevard. Keep going. Here's, here's another example. This and, well, now this is the Richmond apartment. This sits on the property that's now the McCain field named for her parents on Mandalay, right across the beach park. And the way these, there were probably, I'm guessing about a dozen of these on the beach. The way they work is if you came in here, you drove in, you walked, drove out that way, but between each of the cottages was a little carport you drive in. And the reason you didn't cram them together is again, you didn't have an air conditioning. So you had to be able to open the doors and the windows and get the air through. So you could not live like, you couldn't have a condo when you, can you imagine being in a condo without air conditioning? Ah! So this was the original, and uh, it's gone now. And again, these are the bungalows that 
typical Florida at that time. Uh, this one, this one was good. I just found this one six months back. Really, I never knew it was a Spanish restaurant. <clears throat> right here is where <clears throat> um, Mandalay Beach Club up here, across from uh, Beachcomber. Uh, Mandalay Beach Club would be here, and who's uh, name that? Surfstar would be in, in this this area here. But Alexander's son was here for a long time. We had the little uh, soda fountain thing. And it's like a drugstore, anything you needed, and then a soda fountain. But the Alexanders from this club took over the Pier 60 concession. And they were there for many years with hot dogs and everything. They had a great thing. This was turned into the infamous beach bar years ago. If, if you work around for it, I'm not even going to try to describe it. <clears throat> if people will be hanging out in windows, we said that should be the Florida Beach Ballroom Center. But that was just a joke. And here it says the Flamingo Apartments. The Flamingo Apartments were behind here. You don't realize it now if you haven't been here, but behind the Mandalay Beach Club and behind Surf Stop, there was another road that went along the beach. I think it was San Marco, if I remember right, I'm not sure which one was. But the Flamingo Apartments, there was a huge, almost up the whole block, a bunch or something. And they sold it. But that, that sign's point to be backed out when you do the political apartments. This is between CVS and the beach car. This was the cafe apartments. Again, you have this is this is more modern now. You're, you're out of the little wood cottages and you're into the concrete with the Miami windows. Here's another C Corp was 475, which puts that. Uh, probably up by somewhere near uh, CVS as well. Again, it's the car. You can see there's a car park there and a car park there. These, the anchors, uh, one of the guys on our website, Fred Wilder, his grandparents on this. And this was at the end of Papaya Street on the Gulf, which would be directly behind the Mandalay Beach Club. And they had the comedy that what he pointed out Next one, he pointed out on the back here, you can't probably make the only insulated cottages at Clearwater Beach. They were insulated with rock wool, which I'm not sure what it is, but that was, we had ski heat, but they had <laughs> so, okay. Now, these are the cottages here that were just torn down. This is on um, Royal Way and the, you know, the uh, shipwreck, that's what that is, that was about here. Those guys, they're my grandparents standing in front of those cottages in 1940 prior to the conflict. I don't know where they, I think, if Robert would give me, he would not, I think this was on one day. But this is starting, you're starting to get into now a little more modern area. Ah, uh, don't skip over this, let me go on. This was the Kipling. Arms. And the Kipling Arms is where the Speedway is right up here. Right here was uh, my ABC teacher from high school, Mr. Jarakas, and then the Paul Pavilion. Mr. Jarakas, anybody know what ABC is? Did you have to take ABC? It's state mandated for You had to take it. Americanism versus communism. State mandated for the six months. And I'm sure over in Russia they were taking the communism versus communism. <laughs> But uh, and yeah, it was it was it was more of a patriotic plan. But anyway, the Kipling Arms was built there. It to me always looked dreary. It, I would look in this hallway there, and it was either burgundy and gold. It always looked like a problem. It never really looked like it was anything more than that. It was got yeah, okay, Kipling Arms. It was built for $100,000 with 30 apartments in there. That makes each apartment about uh, uh, $3,300. And it stayed there for years and years, and then it just slowly started to deteriorate. And then I think that's came in. That was, yeah, $100,000, you can build 30 apartments. You can't build one of them. Okay. Sorry, it's small. The only way I can get it. This is the property exactly north of the shipwreck. It's the Royal Canadians, everybody the Royal This is before the pool. It had originally been the servant stand, my girlfriend and I, uh, well, my girlfriend's parents, and we used to play in the pool all the time. The village used to come in and uh, throw quarters in the pool. 
died from the mercenaries that were. Ah, okay. You got any idea where this is close? This is the little shopping strip across from the speedway on that delay. Where the, they're tearing down to I think you go to Chase Bank. But this was these were beautiful little apartments. In fact, part of them still exist on, on this side street here. It's a, a second story place of the garages underneath. That was part of this complex. I didn't even see that though. That was really nice. Uh, okay, here we are at the cafe again, but it's changed hands and now the friends. And it looks a little worn. Okay. Okay, this is right around the corner here. The basement is still there. Some of these are still here. Some of them are laid down. Okay. okay, this was the flamingo. This was, these were the anchors. These were the rock hole people. These were our competitors. And I'm not. This was the flamingo. The flamingo was the whole walk. But again, that street is the street is gone. And this was papaya going down to that street. And, and you know, I put this in here because this is a camera shop. This is a taxi. When I was growing up, the beach was a community, like I said before. But we had services here. We had a doctor. We had a dentist. We had, uh, I think, other things that you would have. A hardware store. A hardware store. We had we had a little grocery store right where the ski is. This was a beach, beach supermarket. We had a community here, and as it got more and more popular and evolved, these people couldn't stay in business. You could not have these services. We couldn't pay this for it. What did you So we lost a lot. Now we have what? T-shirt shop. I call it bar Muda. From uh, uh, Baymont to the pier, it's, it's bars, restaurants. We can't really have the services. We have to go to the main I, I need a screw or a bolt or something for the car. I got to go all the way to Home Depot. <laughs> and here's the uh, here's the early uh, marina. Right up here, this empty area, it's just squirting. Okay, all the time squirting. My buddy is the rat my hair, and she, she was dragging up there, and I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> and, okay. Here is where the Karen branch is right now. There was something there most of my life. It went through many different incarnations. I had no idea where they called. It was fairly nice. It was one of the bigger hotels we had. Uh, up here, there was a killer buffet. This is right down the street. This is the town lot. This is right up here. Susan, could you speak a little louder, please? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not speaking into the thing. Thanks. Thanks for uh, so this. Is now the blue wave. Okay, next time you go into Walgreens and buy something there and your sunblock, you're not the footprint of the sandpiper. It's not there anymore. The glass house, the sea towers, the golden villa, there were nine of them. Uh, boy, I went to school with his father and his uncle owned all of those properties. And they sold out long before the Greek development came. They got hundred thousand dollars for that property. Imagine what they got. Could have got today. But then not enough. Here's the glass house again. And there's the sea towers. This this is getting into the sixties and seventies now we're getting. And the Glory Beach Hotel, the back side. Okay. <laughs> this looks familiar, doesn't it? Doesn't it look a little familiar? This is now the shipwreck. <laughs> But up in the front, they had this wonderful little sundry store. And I used to take my dog up there, and they, before we knew the dogs couldn't have chocolate, uh, he would get two pieces of her. She'd kiss us, and then he carried the bag. And uh, this was the Yankee Tavern, which in the next photograph you can see, I think the wives on Clearwater Beach yeah, turned it into a breakfast area. They were tired of the husbands not coming home from the Yankee Clippers. <laughs> Okay, now I had, I don't remember far back on um, South Beach, I showed you where the lagoon was, where Shepherds is now. This was the original, the lagoon. It was one of the first on that that finger and the biggest on that finger. So, yeah, this it was the original Shepherds. Now, you think maybe Shepherds had been in the buffet? No way. Because in the lagoon was a buffet called the Bank. 
And it was wonderful. Jay Keyes, the big supporter of all things beach, Jay and his wife ran the bank restaurant for many, buffet for many years. And I think when Shepherds took over the property, they just took the idea and ran something there. And we're good again. Okay, and here's the Pelican restaurant. This is the second incarnation of the Pelican restaurant. And again, with the uh, postcards, it's, it's you know, artistic license. Of course there's stuff there. There's not a road and a, a sunset. Pelican. Pelican is, Pelican was where the Sand Pearl condominiums are across from Pelican Lawn. It was on the corner. It was in, between that and the beach corner, they were your main things. They, they went back and forth. Oddly enough, the manager of the Pelican down the road, the later Pelican, there the daughter of the and here was another incarnation. I always thought that was ugly. After it burned the first time, both of them burned within a couple years of each other. But it, it just did not do much for me aesthetically. Okay, can we read this? Can you read that? Oh, okay. And the amazing word is pelican. His bill holds more than his belly can. He can blow his feet with food growing, yet feels at his feet like every gal and fella. And Yeah, this is the second second incarnation of Pelican. And um, it, it doesn't, you know, wasn't colored like this. Again, on the Pelican. And here, here was the one, I think this is the one that worked. But it was, and again, another incarnation of the Pelican. This is the one that everybody on the beach still misses to this day. The Bullis is famous, the Island House. Best crime rep, best shrimp, best comp, you could get comp for those. Greek salad, piano bar. There'd be a line, not the first, but there'd be a line down the street for this place. Now, uh, the Bullis's are still around. They still make their wonderful Greek lemon soup. You can buy it in Publix. It's in a little blue can, and it has a little Greek um, borders on the top and bottom, and it's still a good but for everybody, this would be, uh, let's see, what is here? Jimmy Hula's, uh, it would be between Surf Style and Jimmy Hula's in that area there. Beach Comer, early Beach Comer. This is one of the backgrounds with all the Australian pines in the background. Okay, here is the Florida Beach Yacht Club, and that would be right where our pool and tennis courts are today. I was the top half of the building from across the street that flew down here and hurricane was transported over there and became our yacht club. Because you have to remember that where all this strip between where we are and the pool, there's water. And of course they put, a, put docks in there. But there originally were, there were covered docks in there. And actually they were, uh, what do you call it when you put the boat out of the water and stuff? Uh, yeah. uh, high and stuff with it. And they're there at the prams, of course, the launch. Okay, we're going to have a program on the, the Optimus prams for a couple of months. But, uh, all of this was part of the Optimus. Ah, and we did have rains on the little beach. This is where Acacia Circle is, right? Acacia Circle is there. We had two floats. We parade coming out the little beach. That was the Junior Chamber of Commerce. Another, just the view of the little beach and, and what the difference is now. Early Florida Beach Hotel, this is again, this is when it's the Women's Christian College, I think. This is like 1941, Florida Beach. And here again, from the original Florida, well, I guess it's the second incarnation of the Florida Beach Hotel. I just threw that in there because I thought it was interesting. Uh, we make artificial reefs out here with really uh, very compassionate about protecting our marine life and our marine environment. And they're building reefs. They build, used to build them out of cars. Now they, they use old tires. Once in a while, you'll see a tire wash up on the beach. Well, what part of this come from? That came from the reef. And the reefs work. They, they repopulate, especially after the red tide, we need to do something. Okay, the park end. This is a small one. Sorry, that was the one by the roundabout that is gone. Oh, oh okay. In addition to the Highlands and the Pelican, we had this wonderful circus buffet. 
You know it now as Frenchie's Paddleboard Place, the one on uh, Point Stadium. Prior to that, it had been at the Beach Harbor Store. Which every, I think everybody got it from Wild. But prior to that, it was the Circus Buffet. This is Roberts ran this buffet with the world's best chicken pot. People followed her all over. She left here, left the beach, went across from Capitol Theater. There was a circus buffet there. We followed hot pie there. And then when the Sunshine Mall was built across from Big Lots on Missouri, she opened up a buffet there and we followed her there. We followed that chicken hot pie all over town. <laughs> Best thing in the world. Oh, and the funny thing was when Frenchie redid that building and he took the mansard from off, I still saw the sign. I found a picture of it somewhere. I didn't bring it today. It's a cafeteria and all. The chicken pot pie. <laughs> Here's the memorial city center. This is what was taken down to build a roundabout. We had this was the main auditorium. You had the, the police and the library there. And this is where the Jolly Drawing was born. Fred Thomas. And here is me and the fellow from Yankees sitting there birthing that thing. And those guys were driving the first trolleys to get it off. But here's another picture of the uh, Civic Center. And you still have the Australian Pines over in Lot 60. And of course, there's the trolley. So I used to stop there. On Coronado, I don't know where on Coronado this was. I found it. I don't remember it. Maybe somebody else would, but I'm it. Don't find it. Okay, uh, Glory Beach Hotel originally. And I uh, failed to mention that, okay, this being the Gulf, that so much of this land over here was dredged up where we're standing was dredged. A lot of the stuff on um, North Beach, East of Mandela, was pulled up out of the bay. Okay, these are still there. This is the coral. These are the coral apartments. This would be Baymont. Frenchies would be there. And this is East Shore. The coral apartments are still there. The Bay runs a beautiful. The, okay, Glory Beach Hotel. Again, that's too small. And the marina. I think that's what we've seen that. Seaway again. I don't know what it's called now. It's down on the south. Beach. It's the last finger. It's right next to Continental Towers, and they renamed it. And it was originally supposed to be torn down to make something called the Enchantment, and that didn't work out, so they revamped it. Friends of Patio. This is the end of my street. This was Somerset, right on the water. On if you're walking towards the water on Somerset, it would be the last property on your left. It is now Chalet Chateau. All the chalet is on the side. Chateau on my side. Economy. Things we could spell instead here. Okay, stay in play. I think that one has been torn down. That one's I'm not real not sure on Hampton whether that one's still there or not. It's still there. Good. Thank you. Because I don't get the South East much. I have to rely on you guys. Oh, okay. These were the boats we went out on to go fishing. Now I look at them now and go, oh my god, I went out to that, and I went out 30 miles of that. Okay, that was, was that the Sea Hawk? I can't read it. Miss Miss Elsie? Miss Buckeye. Miss Buckeye. All the fishing boats look like that. You go out half day or all day fishing. If you went out half day, it was, uh, this is the Sea Hawk. Yeah. Look how many people are on there. You know, if you go out 50 miles, it was a windy day or a day, and came up with one of you bring me a grocery. <laughs> uh, here's, here's another view of, of one of the hotels in South Beach. I think this one is just a little, little bit south of where the Karen Grant is. Might be where the Hyatt is. Again, the uh, Marina. Clover Beach Hotel. This is the way it looked just before they tore it down. I had the very last dinner ever served there. My friend had the very last breakfast. They tore it down right after <laughs> These these are indicative of the fifties, the carousel, these were these are down on Point Stadium. They also some on Somerset, there was the Monterey. There were about nine or ten of these. My neighbor's father built these. Uh, Mr. Bonasco built a bunch of these in, in the late fifties. And some of them are still around to repurpose. Some of them have been condos now. Next. 
another view of it. This is uh, Gulf Boulevard again, where you can still park here. This is, this is where we are today, and I think I put that on there and you can't see it. There was a water tower here. We're actually doing two water towers, and then there was one, and then And again, the same view. All right, here's, here's the Kieran Grand again. And that's another incarnation. I think that was the Kendall White End at that point. South Beach is becoming a little bit more populated. Here's a little bit of point of school park, but you don't have any of the things to sell about. Look at this, nothing there. Go for you. I know. I must be eight of those in there. I thought I got all the doubles of them. Oh, and here's the last one. And here is this picture for the paper. <laughs> Remember I said we didn't have any sand? Well, we really didn't have any sand, because this is at the end of Cambria. There's a condominium there now, but I remember that house. And these are big flint rocks. They're huge boulders. And they were put in there to hold the sand in. And my girlfriends and I, we would get on there and pretend we were mermaids. And we play with that on. And that was taken. And Frankie, that's 1940 style. You don't, I'm sure you don't remember who that is. Girl, if I know it wasn't me. <laughs> it was you, isn't it? <laughs> that, that picture shows you that those rocks that are thrown there are the that rocks. This lady knows what I'm sure that those rocks were put in front of that property in the Somerset Street in order to keep the Gulf of Mexico from washing that property away. You go down there now, you've got the height to get to the beach. That's how much beach we've accumulated since. Since the past building. That's all we have to say, since the past building. Okay, that takes us back to the original one. That's all the pictures I brought. And I don't know how we're doing on time. Yeah, that's why I was going to open up. Anybody have questions? Questions? No questions. I'm not that good. Somebody has to have one. Look at this now, Bill. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Yeah, okay. His, his question was when did they really start building the beach? Well, it's come gradual over time. You have many spurts. We had uh, a spurt in the 70s for the condominium thing. We had spurts uh, until, until the crash in the 80s. And then everything died. And these, all these apartments and, and hotels on South Beach were all under contract when the, when the economy collapsed. And, you know, they're just now getting back to where they're going to start building again. But it's coming. It's for, and I think many things are, are responsible for that. Like I say, we didn't, nobody knew what Clue Order was. Well, we've had several things. We had the, the ball teams. We've got the Phillies coming. I've got even has the Blue Jays. So that got us in notice. We have, of course, the elephant in the room. We have Scientology. That that brought a lot of people in. We have a program. I'm hearing even on Law and Order, I hear Clue Order. It blows me away. But, you know, a fugitive was caught in his mother's condo in Clue Order 4. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm hearing Clue Order more and more. So we're, we're becoming more. And the more. That, that happens, and the more people come and they tell their friends, oh, you, you don't want to go to the East Coast. They have beautiful sand here, they have wide beach, they have warm water, and the more people that know about the more people come, it creates demand, the more they build. I would have thought by now we would have sunk into the Gulf. But uh, I, I can't give you an exact date. You know, it, it's, come, it's coming, I, I heard from the city that there's 15 to 16 more hotels that have already been permitted for South Beach. The demand is there. There's a question about that. I'm sorry. Can you tell us about the bungalows that were brought over? Oh, oh, the, yeah, okay, that's an interest. Thank you for bringing that. She's talking about the barge homes before there was a causeway. They would build the, I think Sears, most of them were Sears homes. They would build them on the mainland and bring them over on a barge. And if, uh, Acacia, I think the, the south side of Acacia, most of those, Ants House may have been one. And there's one, the one on Jewel, there's been quite a few. 
They're beautiful. They're all hardwood floors. They have a tiny cypress wall. These homes are uh, Cynthia Haggett's home. Cynthia Haggett, remember Cynthia? Her home. Is one. And uh, they've been remodeled, and they're, they're, they'll last forever. They've been through every kind of hurricane in the world. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I thank you so much. 